R.I.P. Ginger Baker. He's blunt. His two demands are blunt. Two prostitutes and a limo. His strawny Ginger Baker achieved rock infamy. With his rage, for his rage towards the generous fellow magicians, the Dockery film director, and most of all his cream bandmate, Jack Bruce. He spent years drunk and addicted to heroin. Gave his own 15-year-old son a line of cocaine. Pug him up for a gig. There's sex with his daughter's mates. It isn't no shock that music legend, the god is one of rock's greatest drummers, has once voted a man least likely to survive the 60s. But yesterday morning, it was announced that a co-founder of the supergroup, Cream, had died peacefully in hospital, at the age of 80, outliving many of his rock and roll counterparts. As the first of his first wives, fourth wives once said, the double takes care of his own. Famous for his smashing, but perfectly timed rhythmic one critic rhythms, one critic d- dubbed him a human combine harvester. From 1966 to 1968, Cream sold 35 million records, awarded the world's first platinum disc for the double album for Wheels of Fire. Their 1967 album, The Israeli Gears, is seen as one of the ceremonial records of the 60s. All three members, Ginger, Barrett, 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 bassist Jack, and guitarist Eric Clapton, sang lead and backing vocals. Ginger said, people say Cream was birthed to heavy metal. If that's so, we should have had an abortion. He, he was born Peter Baker in Lewisham, South East London, and got his nickname for his red hair. Ginger was brought up in the poverty by his mum, stepdad, and aunt after his dad was killed in World War Two. As a teen, become pretty a petty thief and joined a local gang. Retired to, to leave, they attacked him with a razor. He wanted to become a professional cyclist, but gave up when his bike got hit by a cab. It gave him, but it gave him the strong leg muscles, so he could later use to play two bass drums at the same time. Ginger called. I was always banging on the desk at school. The kids kept saying, go, go and play the drums. I just sat down and I could play. It's a gift from God. You have it. Have it. You either got it or you haven't. And I have got it. Time, natural time. Ginger brought his first drum kit age 16 and played in London jazz clubs. He met girlfriend Liz Finch, who he married in age 20 in 1959. A daughter, Julieta, known as Nettie, was born the next year. Jazz also gave Ginger a taste for heroin. He explained, I got involved with drugs for the music. I took some smack and people told me, you play incredible. So I got took smack before every gig. Soon I was having trouble making enough money to feed my wife and baby. I turn up in a, to a gig stoned. They say, what are you doing? I, I, I tell them, I'm taking smack. And they fire me. I used to think they were idiots. And this happened continually. 1962, we met Jack. They formed the Graham Bond organisation. But he fired Jack from the band. Jack Ginger got in touch with Eric with a plan for a new band. The guitarist insisted Jack to be involved, much to Ginger's displeasure. Ginger released debut single, Wrapping Paper, 1966, with the first album, Fresh Cream, com- coming out that year. In 1968, Ginger and Liz had a second daughter, Lida, and the following year, their son, Kufe, was born. <coughs> Despite having a young family, Ginger was involved in foursomes of Jimi Hendrix and many of the string groupies and fans. Included in 1969 feminist writer Jermaine Greer, who was then 30. She said la- he said later she didn't want any kinky stuff, just straight normal man and woman. She's really nice girl. To me, I've always thought the world of her. In her book, Tales of Rock, Stars Daughters, 
published last year. Nettie told how she found her dad in bed naked, except for a waistcoat, with two women. She said, it was funny. Dad's sex life was just seemed normal to me. Your upbringing is unusual to you. I, I liked most of Dad's girlfriends. I had some control over the women we were having, because he was having, because they became, they were my friends. Nettie revealed he was made first prize in a game of pool, included George Harrison at Eric's son, Surrey Mansion. Bing Baker was tourist for his drug field, foul mouthed outbursts often directed at fellow magicians. He was scathing of a rolling stone, once saying they were like a low, little kids. The rolling stones once saying they were like a bloody little kids trying to play black blues music and playing it very badly. He branded Mike, Mick Jagger as a music moron and said of Paul Moon Cotley, he boasts that he can't read music. How can a musician boast that he can't read music? Even Hendrick was down for his, with the fake praise. He could play okay, but he started doing all the showman shit. He, his big thing was pulling chicks, which he was very good at. But it was Jack who bore the blunt of Joe Ginger's Fury on stage of complete the lengthy solos and turn up down fires to drown out the other. Ginger would usually content himself with throwing drumsticks at Jack's head, or once the drummer pulled a knife on the, him on stage. Jack responded by clobbering him with his kit with, with, a, with a double bass. Eric was often driven to tears with the volatile rails. Queen were at the height of their fame when they split in November 1968, blaming the arguments. Yet, when their fourth album, The Goodbye, was released in February 1969, it went to number one. Ginger would join the new supergroup, Blind Faith, if Eric, but soon jumped ship and found, found his, formed his own band. Oh, Ginger continues to make music, including playing with John Lennon's Public Image Limited. He never enjoyed the same level of fame, unfortunately, did with Cream. His son, Coffey, also a talented drummer, was often accompanying him on tour. And once in the mid 1980s, he complained he was too sick and tired to go on stage. Coffey said, when I was 15, I had to play a show with my dad to make money to get back to England from Italy, where I was staying with him. I was so sick I couldn't play, so my dad gave me cocaine. I played my arse off. i never taken cocaine ever again. His dad f- found it harder to resist. He confessed even after his quick heroin. He relaxed some, something like 29 times. Ginger finally managed to kick his addiction in 1981 and said, There's only one person who can help an addict. That's an addict himself. The whole rebound thing is just a bloody con to make money and move, take advantage. He moved to a remote village in Italy where nobody spoke English. I got into olive farming, but it brought about the end of his marriage to second wife, Sarah. He said she got bored with farming, with being straight about drugs. I guess I wasn't exciting. 1998, he moved to Los Angeles. He met his third wife, Karen Lucas, but they t- that two ended in divorce. Cream performed together in, ni- in 2005. Our Eric managed to convince Ginger and Jack to reform his serious concerts at the Royal Harbour Hall. There were still plans for school scale tour, but they end, they ended up, by, by the end of the London gigs, the trio realised that River and Section still hated each other too much. Eric said, After that, I was pretty convinced that he'd gone as far as we could about someone getting killed. This time in my life, I don't want blood on my hands. Few continued right up to Jack's death from liver disease in 2014. When he knew he had just hours to live, he rang, began ringing around friends to say goodbye. But he, then he thought of his, then he thought his nemesis determined to make have the last word. He dialed George's, Ginger's number and said, "I'm dying, Ginger. Fuck you!" Before slamming down 
the phone. Ginger tried repeatedly to call back, but Jack refused to pick up. Ginger later moved to South Africa. We got met and married. Fourth wife, Kasiri, 42 years, he's junior in 2010. He played play by financial difficulties, partly due to an expensive hobby of playing, buying horses to play polo. Yet he never lost his rage. 2012 documentary Beware of Mr. Baker, which is named after the sign of his own drive, begins with him bloodying the face of a director with his cane while letting loose a string of sleeves. He finally hears a play by good health, gigging him and left him deaf, smoking 40 cigarettes a day for 60 years, gave him emphysema. He was suffering from a serious heart conditions and for osteoporosis. Ginger also left South Africa and returned to Kent in a few miles from his birthplace. He just he was just as he had been in the childhood, practically broke.